Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to continue the newest chapter of this turbulent Spinosaurus tale with new findings that support our growing suspicion that the critter did not lead a fully aquatic lifestyle. I've been talking about this dude since my first video in 2014. Right after that one, we covered the new Swimmy Boy version of the dinosaur during the late Spinosaurus renaissance of 2014 and 2015. Boy, did that get out of hand. Dr. Abraham continued to gather remains and eventually published his paper, Tail Propelled Aquatic Locomotion in a Theropod Dinosaur, in the journal Nature in 2020. Of course, Mother Science punished us for our atrocious creative indulgences, and in January of 2021, an article titled The Ecology of Spinosaurus released a plethora of new evidence that systematically destroyed the notion that the dinosaur was purely aquatic, and it was brutal. To begin, their nostrils were posteriorly retracted, but not dorsally retracted. In other words, nostrils were far back to help them breathe while their snout was underwater, but not on top of their head to help them take a breath after being submerged. High tooth regrowth rate suggests they ate hard, slow-moving animals like crustaceans, and microwear analysis and tooth shape places them into the category of grasp smash, grasp crunch predators, which hunt these armored slow animals. Their putative sensory system on their snouts was not unique to semi-aquatic animals, since it has also been found on animals like Neovenator and Despletosaurus that have no aquatic connection. Neuroanatomy of the skull of Irritator, a large spinosaur, showed that the animal had a head-down posture showing ease of vertical movement, which would be important for a waiting lifestyle, but not a pursuit predator one, since they're closely related. The authors are inferring that Spinosaurus is the same way. Spinosaurus had a long neck built for lunging movements, not a short one for quick underwater movement. Analysis of neural connectors in the tail show a lack of tail muscle used for swimming found in crocodilians and monitors. Quote, the hind limbs of Spinosaurus do potentially provide evidence for aquatic locomotion and even striking a prey underwater, but specifically not in the sense of pursuit predation. Their diets were fish as well as pterosaurs and terrestrial dinosaurs. The authors reference a 1988 study that says that no semi-aquatic animal can survive solely on fish. In other words, you spend your whole life in the water hunting fish, or you do what the Spinosaurus did and wade and hunt. Now it is almost 2023, and a new study by scientists at the University of Chicago says it clearly. <clears throat> Spinosaurus was not an aquatic dinosaur. Before we dive, or uh, I mean wade into this video, join our Dino Nerd Club Discord server to chat with other like-minded people, share your art, or suggest new video ideas. I've already done a couple from recommendations. Let us know how you feel about this topic in the Discord and get us to 1,000 members, and if you're that 1,000th member, you'll get a special role on the server. Only for users 13 years or older, as per the Discord terms of service. So what might we find in a study titled, Spinosaurus is not an aquatic dinosaur? Hmm. Dr. Paul Sereno, a professor at UChicago, lead author of this study, and notably a co-leader of the original 2014 paper, reviewed the previous findings, and what he found was interesting. The old paper theorized that the animal's dense bones were a ballast to submerge the creature in the water, and the previous software model showed the animal's center of balance to be forward, causing it to walk on all fours. However, Dr. Sereno says, I love to make mistakes, especially when I can correct them myself. The scientists realized they forgot to account for the lung volume, redid the CT scans in the newest study with flesh and muscles based on modern reptiles, and found that the animal could, in fact, walk bipedally. The dense leg bones helped support the animal's massive weight as it walked. In addition, in an attempt to finally resolve the Spinosaurus dispute, these U Chicago scientists really brought out the big guns, the best of the best of specialists, Dr. Frank Fish. The expert and frankly the authority on anything tail related. Based on the new spino tail discovery, Dr. Fish calculated the propulsion power of the animal and concluded that Spinosaurus' swimming ability, tail feet and all, would be, quote, an order of magnitude less than that of an alligator, end quote. Alligators and crocodiles tuck in their limbs when swimming, while Spino's legs would dangle. The huge sail and dangling limbs, coupled with the fact that its body is too rigid to wiggle through the water, caused immense drag. The team estimated it to have swam at a maximum velocity of 1.2 meters per second, much less than what we see with other extant large body pursuit predators. They also determined that Spinosaurus was an unstable swimmer, unable to right itself. <laughs> Nerd. It also would have been too buoyant to submerge, but they don't stop there. Quote, Most Spinosaurus fossils come from marginal basins along northern Africa. The study states that all extant and extinct large-bodied secondarily aquatic animals, like seals and turtles, live exclusively in marine environments, not marine and freshwater. So Spinosaurus was certainly not an ocean dweller. Instead, quote, the fossil record supports our interpretation of Spinosaurus as a semi-aquatic bipedal ambush predator that frequented the margins of both coastal and inland waterways. Overall, the study had 13 principal conclusions, shown here if you want to pause the video and read them. I admire Dr. Sereno and his team's willingness to admit and correct their mistake, and the excellent work done by the team and Dr. Fish. That name adds a 150% credibility buff. So what can we take from all of this? Spinosaurus was not an aquatic dinosaur, that much is now abundantly clear. Is it new information? Not really, but I like watching the scientific method applied as our understanding of Spinosaurus evolves through the years, because I'm a nerd. Never be afraid to challenge something in science, it only seeks to uncover more about how we perceive the natural world. <sighs> now, if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna go publish a paper on how I believe that Spinosaurus could fly. As always, thank you for watching. 
Remember to keep an open mind, and I'll see you next time.